Another example of monads is implementing a library that allows you, or kind of like a DSL, that allows you to write list comprehension using the monadic uh, API or the monadic pattern. So you might have seen this in more mathematical papers. So let's see this example where we have, we are creating, defining a list in the set builder notation. Usually it's to define sets, but for this particular lesson, we are defining not a set, but a list. So what do we, how does it work? We use these brackets and then we put conditions and the conditions are telling us how to generate the values. You can think of this as a for loop that is going for each x in one, two. And then if you have a semicolon, you can have another one. So you can have multiple nested. So this would be a double nested loop where in the outermost you're doing for every x, one, two, and for every y to be three, four. What I'm doing is returning the pair x comma y so essentially what this is returning is the combinations of all, right? So the product of the two pairs. You're going to have 1, 3, 1, 4, 2, 3, and 2, 4. So the, the monadic syntax for that is very close to what we wrote here mathematically. We do a bind. We assign 2x to be the result. So it's for each x in one two and for each y in three four return so you can think of this as return as well so in, actually in some papers the pure operator is known as return uh, return the pair x y and the pair we write with cons so if we were to write this you would get the list that you would expect exactly what is in this slide so in the next few slides i'm just going to show you how to implement these according to the paper that is introduced if you follow this paper from 1990 uh, by philip wadler you will actually see uh, this example listed there so it's just the implementation of what is in the paper it really doesn't matter how do you come up with it so that's why i'm not going to spend too much time here i just wanted to show you that there are other not more creative ways of using monads so to be able to understand how the implementation works, first we need to introduce the join operator. You can think of it as just a way to flatten a list of lists. What it's going to do, it's going to concatenate all the... This list has multiple lists inside, right? So in this case, you only have one, but in this example, you have two. And what it's going to do, it's just concatenate all the lists together into a single list, right? So list of lists becomes a list of a list of lists of nets becomes a list of nets, right? So you're going to flatten all this and concatenate all the lists together. If you have a list with one and a list with two, you get a single list with one, two. And if you have a list with one, two and another list with three, you would get one, two, three. The way you implement this, very easy. Just do a fold. Fold will go for every element in the list. What are the elements? They are lists. And what we're going to do, we're just going to accumulate and append them together. Pretty simple. So what join is doing is takes a list, concatenates all the elements, does that with folder and append. Append performs concatenation of two lists. Fold will iterate over all elements. So how do you return list pure? You just convert whatever you pass it as a list. So what is bind? Bind is very simple. Up one is going to be a function. Sorry, up two is going to be the result. And up one is going to be the list. So how do we return it? We will basically perform a map of the continuation for every element, right? Because what we want to do is always handle for each element of x for each element of x and y, that's what's going to be in the scope. And this is what we're going to return as the contents of the output list, right? This is going to be the contents of the output list. So essentially, you implement that with a map, but the map is just going to return a list of lists, and then you flatten all of that. So you can think of this as a flat map. Um, and if you convert your macro and replace it to list bind, 
then writing this code would be the same as writing this whole thing which would generate the the right code and you would get what you would expect it and this i'll just ask you to try to do it at home copy paste it to your own record um, favorite record ide and try to run the examples to see that this indeed works as expected and that's basically it okay so you can you saw that we did we use list comprehension sorry monads for a completely different example that we're not really going to use in our homework but it's more to give you a flavor that you don't necessarily have to use it for side effects as in mutation or the classic side effects such as mutation and um, mutation and uh, errors or exceptions. You can also use it to represent list comprehension. Who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs>